Okay guys, well we're back from uh, our cleanup. Next to uh, we got to uh, reinstall this extractor on this bolt. We'll start off with our uh, plunger pin and our extractor that we have. Uh, like I say, we got these parts from Midway USA. They had them in stock and on hand. Uh, normally, kind of the accepted procedure for doing this is doing this in a bag because this little extractor tends to go sailing if uh, you don't get everything back in there exactly as you planned on. One thing I'm going to do is go ahead and move this camera in close so hopefully you get a better idea of what's going on here with it. So we've got our extractor, spring, and plunger. This kind of one just sits in there. It's not like the 1911 where it actually clicks into the spring. This goes in place into the bolt and then is compressed down into place. That puts the spring tension on the extractor. Now the extractor goes right in there. And the best way to do this is to have three hands. What I'm going to do, I got a slightly smaller screwdriver. I'm going to use that one instead. To compress that spring and mechanism down. Like I say, I'm going to try to do this so I can give you guys the best possible camera angle, too. What you cannot see is there's a very small little groove built into the bolt that this extractor goes into. The trick is having the extractor stay in. place while compressing the spring and the plunger and not having all the parts go Okay. Okay, so our extractor is under spring tension now. If you can see it, the plunger is right there pushing against the extractor. You can see that we've got a nice good hook on the extractor there. sticking out properly on the bolt. So that should engage our 22 long rifle. And as you can see we did do some jeweling on there. This makes it look a little fancy. Alright, so let's put this camera back up where it was at to start with. And we can go ahead and start on our reassembly. 
I like to say uh, the reassembly is slightly different than the disassembly. The reason behind that is is the way this bolt it doesn't ride on anything in the receiver it rides on these bars that were holding the spring so it the bolt is actually only connected to the frame via these two rails. Now, what the trick is with this is to get enough of the recoil spring onto the rod then get the rod fed through the bolt on both sides what there is is there's a small just like there's a hole in the back of the receiver here there's a hole in the front of the receiver there and we'll take a look at that here in a second but that's what allows the bolt to travel back and forth and not actually be in any physical contact with the receiver itself. Well, like I say, the trick is, is to get these two springs on the rods get the rods fed through without bending the springs. So then our set screws go in the back. Hold the receiver. They were only finger tight before, but I'm going to give them a little bit of a, I guess what I'll call a tight finger tight. Just nudge them a little bit with the screwdriver handle. I don't want them tight, and I don't want to strip them out because this is just a aluminum receiver. And we'll make sure our bolt travels well seems to. And like I said, here's a view of the front end of that receiver and you can see where those two rods go into the front portion of the receiver. So our bolt is making good contact with the breech face. It seems to be nice and square. The recoil is good. We will shoot a little bit of lube in. CLP in there. Work it in. You may or may not have noticed we did uh, do polishing on those rails as well as uh, polishing that bolt up just a tad. Again, should just add to some smoother action there. So we've got good smooth action with the bolt. So, looking through our trigger assembly, I notice the magazines do fit a little tight and it does have some raised edges on it. What we're going to do is 
just run a file on the forward edge of the magwell where those rough edges are at. Now obviously don't want to get too carried away. This receiver is plastic but uh, there's an edge in there from where it was molded and that's what we're wanting to take out. Just clean it up a little bit. See if that allows our mags to go in a little bit easier which it does. This 30 round magazine I just don't know that you're gonna clean it up much. Do a little cleanup on the magazine itself too. But what I don't feel now is I don't feel any particular rough. I uh, got a little one right there. Just saying, just want to clean those edges up from the casting. I'm not not wanting to make that magwell any bigger than it already is. It's a little better. Yeah, but the small 10 round magazines dropped free, which they weren't even doing before. So, there is some improvement there, which is exactly what we're looking for. Just a little bit of improvement, nothing much. As you know, occasionally with some injected molded parts, you run into that situation where you get a little ridge. All right, so got our hammer back in the uh, fire position. We're going to go ahead and install our trigger group back into place. pin and push in. If you remember that this side was flush and this side was slightly reset, which is what we want. All right, then we're ready to install our stock back in place. This is a uh, free floating stock, or should be. a way to test for that to see. We may just uh, go ahead and check that out while we're at it. See if, uh, if it's not free floating. We'll go ahead and make some adjustments to the stock and see. But to do that first, we gotta go ahead and install our groove or screws in place, have them tight where they would normally set. I don't know if I've got a dollar bill in the house or not to find out, to check, but... The theory is, is that... Just push your charging handle into place. And that should have it back together. Like I said, let's see if I've got something here I can substitute for a dollar bill. Because in theory, if, uh, if we're truly free floating, should be able to take a dollar bill and run between the stock and the barrel. So we'll use our simulated dollar bill here. And we'll see what we can do. A little bit of a tight spot right there. Okay, so pretty good. We're able to 
that one spot right there. It's right there where it says 22 long rifle. Except for that spot, it's uh, pretty free. So let's, uh, let's just uh, take this stock off real quick. Take a look at it. See if there's a high spot there or not. I don't know if there is. Got to remember too, we still got sights to put on this gun, so first thing we'll do is just take a look real quick here. Where are the yeah, there's a rib right there. So what we'll do real quickly, I do have a round file. We'll just uh, take and round file that out. It's a nice thing with a plastic stock. It doesn't take much at all to take care of that. Okay, so we got that. That should be clear now. That will give us our complete free float on our barrel from our stock. And then all we have left to do is just uh, drop some sights on this. Like I say, this rifle was bought with a scope on it, and someone had modified the rear sight, and the leaf or whatever it was that was originally there is no longer there. So what we had to do was we just went and bought a uh, complete fiber optics uh, sight set from uh, it's Williams Fire Sights and we're just going to uh, completely replace both the front and the rear sight with those. So simple removal of the rear sight, front sight should be the same, single screw holding it in place. Move this down and give you a little better camera angle on it. Alright. With a little bit of resistance, it comes free. So. Places where we clean the dirt up off that barrel. Just starting to get a little rust. It's one of those spots, of course, that never gets cleaned up. Certainly never gets cleaned up appropriately. So with the Williams Fire Sights, you get a front and a rear fiber optic sight, which is a direct replacement for the factory sights. Comes with its own screw set, holes to match. You want to use the screws that they send with it though because they are different than 
the factory screws. I'll go ahead and put that rear side on there and run it down. To about the halfway mark. I mean, obviously, the only way we're going to get this truly sighted in properly is to take it out to the range and shoot it. But we'll start with that spot and see where we need to go from there. Front side again it comes with its own screw. William supplies. Single screw holds it in place. And I'm tweaking into place. And uh, there we've got the sights replaced with fiber optics. Got a little touch up to do on this uh, gun. We want to go over and clean up a few dirty spots on the receiver and stuff but uh, all in all we've got it back together we have yet to go out and test fire it which is be the uh, the next thing we do anyway this is the uh, Remington 597 with a uh, repaired extractor and uh, new uh, Williams fire sights I hope you guys find this interesting we'll talk to you later you have a good day